Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com. And this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, April 14th, 2020, and we are pre-recording this Trading Places Live. Currently, however, futures are pointing to a strong open. Looks like the Dow Jones will open well over 1% along with the other key indices, but uh, we still have time before the opening bell and we do know things can change quickly in this volatile environment, but still, at least for now, it looks like we're gonna have a strong open, then we'll see what happens from there. I uh, wanna go over some of the things that we're gonna go through today um, on our agenda, so let's uh, take a look at that. Daily market recap, of course, we always start with that, see what happened yesterday. I'm gonna get into uh, talking technically, and there I wanna talk about a few stocks that performed extremely well yesterday, leading the NASDAQ 100 to outsized gains, or at least outperformance. And uh, also take a look at some of the leading components of the NASDAQ 100. You may not be aware, but uh, looking back over the last month, there are several companies that really have led to uh, or led the NASDAQ 100 to outperformance. So we'll take a look at some of those and look at their charts. Then we'll get into the uh, Max Payne uh, sec segment of this particular uh, webinar. We do have options expiring this Friday. And if you recall, the last two option expiration Fridays, both in February and March, resulted in major reversals. And we have been rallying very nicely over the last couple of weeks. So we wanna talk a little bit about what that could mean later this week or into next week. Get into earnings spotlight, earnings season kicking off uh, today with some big companies. Talk about some of those reports and how the, how the charts look. Maybe if we have time, take a look at how they are performing in pre-market. Uh, go through a few upgrades and downgrades, and then we'll wrap up today with three you must see. Uh, looked at one particular industry group where we're seeing the daily PPO moving from negative into positive. So we're seeing now enough strength where we're beginning to show bullish momentum um, in this particular area. It's been a fan favorite for many of the past uh, 10 years, uh, one, a group that's been performing really well. So it's nice to see it picking up some strength. And I'll show you three charts, three of the better looking charts, or at least three of the uh, better relative strength charts within the industry group. That will be our three you must see to wrap up the show. Uh, but before we get into any of that, I do wanna announce that later today, I am doing a special webinar on Max Payne for the month of April. And uh, if you go to earningsbeats.com to the home page here, you'll see big green button here in the middle, join today. Uh, there is a $7, it's a fully refundable, $7 30-day trial. So if you click there, you'll find uh, some of the things that you get uh, with our membership. And then you can just click on the join today down at the bottom and sign up for 30 days. Um, no um, you know, no uh, risk whatsoever, really. I mean, we're gonna refund $7 for you. And uh, you can check out the Max Payne webinar, check out our service for the next month. I think this next month could be a very interesting month for the market overall and see if you like the, the service. If you don't, cancel at any time, no big deal. Uh, let's get into what happened yesterday. The Dow Jones Industrial did rally back, uh, which was nice. I mean, it didn't rally nearly as much as the NASDAQ, but still finished down just 328 points yesterday. It was down close to 600 earlier in the session. So it finished down 1.4%. Uh, the S&P 500 down about 1%, also rallying in the uh, second half of the day, especially in the final hour. NASDAQ uh, rallied back very strongly and actually moved into positive territory, gaining nearly a half a percent on Monday. Still though, mid caps, small caps underperforming. They rallied as well, but you can see not even close to the highs that we saw at the end of last week. And if you look at the NASDAQ, we are challenging those highs. So the relative underperformance of mid caps and small caps, I think are pretty obvious just from looking at this chart. And this is a 10 day hourly chart going back uh, really since uh, the latter part of March. As far as sectors go yesterday, technology and communication services were the two sectors that were finished in positive territory. These are two aggressive groups, so it was nice to see. Similar to the NASDAQ, both of these groups got up close to the highs from last week, which was an encouraging sign, seeing the aggressive groups trying to break out before some of the other groups. Real estate pulled back quite a bit. This was the worst performing group yesterday, down more than 4.5%. Financials down about three and two thirds percent and utilities down a little more than 3%. So these three areas you can see really struggled yesterday. And in the case of real estate, we really didn't even see much of a recovery into the close. 
when the market was showing a lot of strength. So overall action here, not particularly good uh, in those areas that I just mentioned. 10-year treasury yield. Let's get you an update, see if we've got anything here. I know it was right around seven and a half, or excuse me, 0.75%, not seven and a half. 0.75% is where the 10-year treasury yield uh, currently resides. If there's one problem I have with this market going higher, and, and really I guess you can just look at the 10-year treasury yield either as the glass being half full or half empty. When I look at it, I wanna see money rotating away from treasuries. The way you see that is treasury prices come down, yields go up. So what I wanna see is instead of the yield trending below its 20 day moving average, I really wanna see the yield get back up above it and begin trending higher. That will tell us that money is that rotating away from treasuries and that's money that can then go into equities. When I see the 10 year treasury yield just flat here for the last few days while the mark, stock market's going higher, it makes me wonder whether or not that rally is sustainable. Now the flip side of this is, hey, look at what the equity markets are doing without money, significant money rotating from treasuries. When that happens, look at how the advance can continue. It depends on how you wanna look at this, but I'd really like to see this downtrend reverse and start to show more of a sustained uptrend. And the way you do that is to get above that 20 day moving average and stay there. I like to see an uptrend stay above its 20 day. Right now we're below. So this is something to watch for. Now we have got, a number of huge economic reports coming out tomorrow. So we've been somewhat blessed, I'd say, at the beginning of this week because we haven't had any economic reports, very few economic reports, no uh, earnings reports until this morning. And so the market has kind of been able to ignore maybe some of what's been going on or what, what we're likely to see. Tomorrow's economic news, retail sales will be out. The Empire State Manufacturing Survey, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is the New York Fed conducting a monthly survey of New York manufacturers, the first of every month. It goes back and questions the same 200 manufacturing executives, and usually that's the president or the CEO. Um, and essentially what they're looking for is for these uh, CEO types to report changes in an assortment of indicators from the previous month. And then they also give their view about the likely direction of these indicators over the next six months. So you can imagine what this number might be tomorrow, given what's taken place in New York. Uh, I suspect this is gonna be a real headline number tomorrow, the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. So retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing Survey, industrial production, capacity utilization, housing market index, and then at 2 p.m. tomorrow, the beige book comes out, and that's a, a basically a report that comes out two weeks before the Fed meets, and it's just giving economic evidence from one of the Federal Reserve districts, and just pick one, one of the 12, um, because there are probably none of them that are very good. So I suspect that the market's going to have a lot of bad news to face on Wednesday. How is it going to react to that? I think this is going to be real critical because we're, you know, we've seen some bad news the last couple of weeks, especially with initial jobless claims, and the market's been shaking it off. But when we get a whole slew of economic data that's probably going to be really bad tomorrow, how does the market react, especially with options expiration coming up? Uh, but anyway, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, top stories today, we got uh, J&J raising their dividend. They did cut their 2020 earnings outlook, but they raised their dividend. Uh, JP Morgan reports a big decline in first quarter earnings. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, futures are higher. So we're seeing the Dow up more than 300 points in the early going. We'll see whether or not that sticks. Uh, Netflix, Amazon, Tesla all soared on Monday, helping the NASDAQ 100 move into positive territory. Crude oil this morning down about 2%, below $22 a barrel. Uh, as I mentioned, 10-year Treasury yield remaining steady near 0.75%. Overnight, Asian markets mostly higher with the Nikkei up more than 3%. And uh, this morning in Europe, right now we're mixed. The DAX is up slightly more than 1%, or at least it was maybe 20, 30 minutes ago. So we're seeing some pretty good um, stuff going on here before the bell. And I say pretty good um, because of some of those earnings and I'll go through those in a bit. Let's move now into the talking technically. And I wanna show you a couple of charts here. And the first one is uh, Amazon. And Amazon made a really big move here 
um, yesterday. Stock was up more than 6%, challenging its high. Um, this was, uh, you know, like I said, pretty good action here in a market that was down considerably early in the day. Amazon was helping to prop up the NASDAQ, which had been outperforming all day long, but it was negative. Uh, but the, by the close, stocks like Amazon, and, and take a look at the accumulation distribution. I've been talking a lot about this indicator lately because the market, and it showed it again yesterday, it was down early, but it was, there were buyers throughout the day, and we've been seeing this. And one of the best indicators, I think, in, in the entire uh, tool chest at Stock Charts, when you're talking about you know, what's happening in the middle of a trading day, I think the accumulation distribution is one of the best tools to use in this environment. It's, one, it's been one of my go-tos. And you can see Amazon was already, even before yesterday, breaking to a multi-month high. And then with yesterday's action, we actually broke to a 52-week high in accumulation distribution. So Amazon looking really good in that regard. Netflix, look at Netflix breaking out to an all-time high. When we saw the stock break down back in mid-March, look at its accumulation distribution, never budged to the downside. Actually, we saw a little bit of movement to the downside when we started to rally, but now you can see with yesterday's breakout, also breaking out on the accumulation distribution. Very, very strong day, up over 7% on Netflix. And both Amazon and Netflix are playing into this new paradigm shift, working from home. Um, when everybody's socially isolated and we're at home, think about what Netflix does. You know, can't go to the movie theaters anymore but you, you can binge watch Netflix, you can order movies. Same with Amazon Prime, a lot of shipments from Amazon. These are companies that are benefiting from what's taking place right now. Um, a lot of companies you're worried about, well, how bad is the earnings gonna be? I think when you look at Netflix and Amazon, you're thinking, how good are these earnings gonna be? Because they're gonna be good. Look at Netflix bouncing off this 20-day moving average. That's what I was talking about with the 10-year treasury yield. Here's what I, what I mean by a stock that is trending higher. When we pull back, we hit that 20-day moving average and we bounce. And in yesterday's case, we actually exploded to a new high. Very strong action in Netflix. Um, I also wanna show you some of the other components within the NASDAQ 100 that have been performing well. Over the last month, by the way, you know, looking at this, over the last month, Netflix ranks eighth out of the 100 NASDAQ 100 stocks. This ranks eighth. Think about that for a minute. With all we've been through, this rally ranks eighth out of 100. So there's still some pretty good companies out there. Amazon is fourth on the NASDAQ 100. Want to know what's first? Hasbro, a toy company. Think about working from home and think about... Um, you know, having to entertain your kids, you know, can't go out, can't really go anywhere. A lot of these companies selling toys, the toys index has been one of the best industry groups. So this was a company that didn't really look very strong for a while, but once we came out with all these stay at home orders, you can see things have picked up. Now I'm a little skeptical because here in this case, the accumulation distribution came off the bottom, but we had a really big rally here and we haven't really seen the same type of rally in accumulation distribution. So this one's maybe a little uh, less bullish in my view than some of the others. Illumina though, as we were moving to new lows back in mid-March, Illumina was putting in higher accumulation distribution readings. And as we move higher, it continues to strengthen. Very few filled candles here. Filled candles are when you close below the open. Hollow candles are when you close above the open. So we've been seeing a lot of action where we're seeing buying throughout the day. That's where you would see hollow candles. ILMN, Illumina, has a lot of those, very few filled candles. That's a good sign, I think, in this type of an environment. So Illumina has been very strong. Citrix, uh, CTXS, this is Citrix Systems. Stocks pulled back a little bit from over 150 down to around 140. It's probably an opportunity. Uh, watch the 20-day. It's been bouncing off of it. We're not far from it right now. So this is a stock that on weakness yeah, might be worth uh, at least consideration from a short-term trading perspective. Just recently at a 52-week high on accumulation distribution. The last one I'll show you, and this is the third biotech in the top six. Um, ALXN, um, 
actually it's the second no it's the third in the top six uh, there's one other and i'm trying to think what it is um uh, let's just take a look at Alexian. Take a look at when it was going down back in mid-March. See the huge, you don't really see a lot of filled candles. And on the way back up, look at all the hollow candles. Look at what's going on with the accumulation distribution. So the stock maybe isn't doing that well, but I'm thinking there's a lot of institutional accumulation based on the volume, which has been strong. The hollow candles, we're now trending above the 20 day. The PPO has gone positive. These are all companies that are helping to lead the market to the upside. Uh, I would be, you know, looking pretty carefully at these types of companies. All right, let's move on to Max Payne. I wanna just show you a couple things with Max Payne. First, um, on the S&P 500, as we went into the third Friday, I'm just gonna show the last three months here. So we had this big rally that had been going on through February, we were at an all time high and the third Friday was the 21st. So on the 19th, when we set our high at 3,400, you gotta be careful because there's a lot of in the money calls. So anybody who was playing puts on the way up, who was trading puts, puts are pretty much worthless or certainly not a whole lot of value. Anybody on the call side, however, when you're sitting at an all time high, a lot of the calls that you've been buying have a lot of value in them. So as you head into option expiration week, Many times it behooves market makers to see lower prices into the Friday close and then many times the week after. And if you've listened to my program uh, for a long time, you know that seasonally, historically, the 19th to the 25th is where we tend to have our weakest action in the stock market. Not every month, but that's a tendency. It's something to be aware of. And if you look from the 19th to the 25th, that's where we got hit very hard. And the reason that it works a lot of times is that uh, you tend to see the market move higher from the 11th to the 18th, which we did. Like I said, setting it all time high on the 19th before we rolled over. So it's important to know what relationship stocks have relative to their max pain. Max pain can be defined a couple of different ways, but essentially what I'm looking for is the point at which all the in the money call premium equals all the in the money put premium. So basically it's a great big wash. Um, now other max pains I've seen look at the point at which the fewest options are paid out, which is not exactly the same max pain that I look at. Um, we'll talk about both of those in that webinar later today. But as we moved into March, look at what happened. Now we're not going up, we're going down into option expiration week. The 20th was option expiration Friday. Many stocks, let me show you Tesla. So Tesla had gotten beaten up, but look at the 18th, two days before options expiration. I can tell you that the max pain on the 20th was at 477. And if I pull up this inspect button, now this doesn't always happen like this. The high that day was 477. The low two days earlier was 350. This stock went up $120 in two days to hit it's max pain level. Now it's been rallying since, but now you can imagine we've probably got a lot of in the money calls. Tesla will be one I look at later today to give you some clues. But this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Now we've got the S&P 500 and we're looking at it with mostly a good rally heading into option expiration week. Now it's only Monday or Tuesday, so we just have Monday's action. We still got four days to go. Uh, you know, you can pull the trigger a little bit too early on these max pain trades but this is something that I certainly would be watching as we go through toward the end of the week. If we continue to rally and we've got good futures going on today, if we continue to rally over the next day or two, I think as we get closer and closer to options expiration Friday and into next week, I think that could be a timing for a pretty significant reversal. And we're already at a level where we've got to be careful if you follow Fibonacci off of this move to the downside. We're at about that 50% level right near 2,800. So with today's movement to the upside, we're probably going to be challenging the high that we saw at the end of last week on the S&P. We'll see whether or not we can get through. Um, keep in mind, Max Payne this week could make it a more difficult to see a serious advance take place from the current level. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. I want to go over some earnings. Let's start with Johnson & Johnson. They came out, they beat on the top line, beat on the bottom line, $2.30 versus 203. They did guide lower, 750 versus 790. 
One thing you can do if you want to see what's going on in pre-market is you can pull up the symbol summary and take a look at JNJ. And you will see that the stock is up 4.6 today, $4.60, or excuse me, $4.60, up 3.3%. So 144.40, if we go back, and you can see that's gonna take us up near the high recently um, of just over 145. The Look at the accumulation distribution. Johnson Johnson's been strong. This is actually one of my favorite stocks heading into earnings season. So I'm not surprised we're getting positive reaction even though they lowered guidance. I think maybe it's a relief rally that they didn't have to lower guidance any further. And the fact that uh, I think they also raised their, their dividend. I think J&J, I have to do double check that. I don't have it in my notes, but I thought they raised their dividend. So you might want to double check that. But we could see a move down here, left shoulder. There's your neckline. Here's the move down, back to the right side of the neckline. If we pull back one more time, if we do see weakness into the later in this week and we get a 20-day test or something down in the upper 130s, that could be a great time for entry into Johnson & Johnson. So I really like this one. J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan came out. Stock is up 2.6%. J.P. Morgan missed on their top line. Uh, I saw a report saying they beat on their revenues, but from what I saw, they missed. 28 and a quarter billion versus 29.45 billion. Big miss on their bottom line. They upped their provision for credit losses from 1.5 billion to 8.3 billion. Now, I think the reaction here is JP Morgan's a pretty conservative bank when it comes to their forward guidance. And I have a feeling that they have really thrown in the kitchen sink here on their potential credit losses. So as we look at the chart, you know, one thing I'll say about JP Morgan, it's been horrible. Um, it's accumulation distribution hasn't been great. But when you look at the relative strength on JP Morgan, check out its strength versus other banks. This tells you that yes, banks have been very weak. You can see banks relative to the S&P, but JP Morgan has been one of the leaders. So if you must own a bank, I think JP Morgan is a solid bank to own. And with it opening up at 102 and change, it's not a breakout, but maybe at least in the short term, we see maybe a challenge up near that 104 area that we've seen the last couple of days. Can we get through? If so, then I think we have a shot maybe up near that 50-day moving average. But if the market sells off here over the next few days or next week and we get a pullback, keep in mind this is one of the strongest banks. So if you want to add a bank, I think JP Morgan makes a lot of sense. Um, let's look at one other stock here. Wells Fargo reported this morning. And this one has not been a great performer. It is up about 2% pre-market to $32. So let's take a look at Wells Fargo. And let me show you the difference between Wells Fargo and JP Morgan. Relative to banks, look at Wells Fargo going down and it's been going down for months relative to its peers. JP Morgan's going higher. So yes, they both reported earnings. Yes, both of them are up a couple percent, but when I get the, you know, that's about where the similarities end on this chart. Um, I think it's clear Wall Street favors JP Morgan is ditching uh, Wells Fargo. I would ditch Wells Fargo as well. I think JP Morgan is the better play here. Um, let's keep moving on. We do have one other report coming out later today that I'm watching, and that's going to be JB Hunt. Truckers have actually held up pretty well, and you can see JB Hunt doing well. It hasn't been one of the best trucking stocks but it has been rallying and holding its 20-day moving average. If I pull up the accumulation distribution on JBHT, you'll see that it has been trekking higher for the last six weeks or so. Just a slight pullback, especially yesterday with that big red candle. Um, but overall, not bad. There are other truckers out there that look better than JB Hunt, but this one could be a barometer for the overall trucking group. So I'm going to be watching this one after the close today. All right, upgrades and downgrades. How about we take a look first at Chubb, which was upgraded. Uh, nice accumulation distribution here. So again, when you look through all of this action, maybe two or three big red filled candles or even one black filled candle. Filled candles, again, you're closing below the open. But outside of that, this has been a stock that has a lot of hollow candles. So when you can get it in the morning hours down, Historically, or at least over the past month or two, that's been when it's been a great time to get into the stock. 
So keep that in mind. And that's what this rising accumulation distribution line means to me. Um, Tesla, mentioned Tesla, it's being upgraded today. Tesla, huge day yesterday, got up to 650. Probably one of the best candles, <clears throat> excuse me. Probably one of the best candles I've seen on Tesla in the last month and a half. Lots of buying, look at the volume pickup. That's a good signal. And we're starting to see that accumulation distribution turn back to the upside. So maybe Tesla's turning a corner here with that upgrade, not gonna hurt. Another company upgraded today, Molina Healthcare, another was Workday. Among downgrades, APPN, Appian, software company, um, CME, Deer, DE, Etsy, Square, and also Cloudfare, Net. This one is interesting because this has been a very strong stock in terms of accumulation distribution. And you can see that uh, big move up yesterday, very, very strong action on Net yesterday. So with a downgrade, get an opportunity. It does have a lot of very solid um, candles, hollow candles. Uh, recently, a little bit more filled candles, but I would still say based on the overall picture here, the stock looks pretty good. Volume picked up with that huge candle yesterday. I think net looks pretty good. All right, uh, let's go into the three you must see. Let's wrap this thing up. I'm going to go in and just first show you what I did. Um, actually, before I show you where I went, let me just show you the chart on the semiconductors. Um, after moving up, looks like some topping candles, but very resilient yesterday. Here's your daily PPO just per, uh, turning into positive territory. Um, a break above about 4,025 is something I would watch closely here. And if it happens, let me give you the three stocks that I would pay attention to. This is simply just watching what's going on on the chart in the group and then going to the scooter reports, large caps, typing in semiconductors. And when you do that, you will see the three at the top, AMD, NVIDIA, Intel, all with scooter scores above 90. So the three charts that I think you should be keeping an eye on here, the first AMD breaking out above this $50 level. Uh, looks like a really strong breakout to me. Again, we've had a nice run. We'll wanna watch options. Options expire this Friday. So some of these stocks could pull back, but that might present some opportunities beyond that. So keep that in mind. The other, the second one I mentioned, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, uh, you can see here, making a nice breakout above its 20 day, going down, testing it. Nice reversal, strong accumulation distribution. And then the final one is Intel. Um, Intel on an accumulation distribution standpoint, not as strong. You see more filled candles here. Um, kind of a mix of filled and hollow candles, but we are trending higher. It is one of the highest ranked stocks in terms of relative strength, but I prefer to get the stocks that have both strong relative strength and strong accumulation distribution. So that's been a change that I've made in my trading strategy here over the course of the last several weeks. Because again, when you look at something like the QQQ, you see a lot of filled candles. I have seen a lot of gap downs with hollow candles, meaning that there's buying throughout the day. The QQQ, even though we're way below the high in February, we're not that far from breaking to a new high. And that's something that I think we have to be very, very cognizant of. The market does much better after the opening bell. So knowing that, pay attention to these companies that have strong accumulation distribution lines. All right, that's it for today. Uh, check out my webinar later today. Go to earningsbeats.com. Everybody have a great day. Happy trading. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.